Welcome to part three of our series on God-given desires and flesh patterns of sin. In this video, we'll explore the ongoing conflict between flesh and spirit in the life of a believer and how the Spirit of Christ empowers us to overcome these flesh patterns. Understanding this conflict is key to walking in the freedom that Christ has already won for us. If you haven't done so already, I encourage you to watch part one and two before you watch part three. What is this conflict between flesh and spirit? Well, in Galatians 5.17, Paul tells us that the flesh sets its desires against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. This is not a battle between two separate natures, but rather a motivational conflict. A motivational conflict between the old patterns of selfish behavior and the spirit's promptings to express Christ's divine character in and through us. Let me give you a window of understanding. The flesh in the Christian life. Even after conversion, these flesh patterns remain in our lives. Paul explains that while we are dead to sin, Romans 6.11, and free from sin, Romans 6, 7, the daily battle in our minds continues between the old patterns, the old fleshly patterns, and our new life in Christ. May I illustrate it like this? Picture a dark room with a light switch. Well, before accepting Christ, the room was completely dark symbolizing a life lived in spiritual death and governed by the flesh. But praise God, through conversion, we were transferred from the dominion of Satan to the dominion of God. The light of Christ has now come into our spirit, but shadows or flesh patterns remain in the desires of our soul. Now, that's very important that you notice the distinction that I'm making. When we're talking about the flesh patterns of sin, we're always talking about their location being in the desires of the soul and not your spirit where you're in union with Christ. And this distinction between soul and spirit is crucial to understand. The light is present in our spirit, but parts of our soul remain dim. As we walk with the Spirit, as we walk by the Spirit, His light continues to fill the room, illuminating those dark areas. And this is what Paul meant in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, when he said, be filled with the Spirit. It's important to remember that the battle is the Lord's, 1 Samuel 17, 47. Though we may feel the pull of those old sinful patterns, the victory has already been won through Christ. So you may ask, well, how, how do I walk in the Spirit? Well, the good news is because of the indwelling presence of Christ, He is the one that can enable you to overcome these patterns. So it's not so much something that you need to do as much as it's something that you need to participate with Him and allow Him to do in and through you. Now, that's truly good news. 
as Scripture declares in Romans, we are under no obligation to respond to the flesh, Romans 8, 12. But instead, Paul writes that we are called to walk by the Spirit, Galatians 5, 16. And he goes on to say, to manifest the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. An illustration would be helpful at this point. Imagine a road with two paths. We've all come to those forks in a road, haven't we? The path of the flesh leads to a destructive self-centeredness, while the path of the Spirit leads to God-centeredness. As we walk by the Spirit, we bear the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, and other godly traits, fruit of the Spirit. Each step we take in the Spirit produces a harvest that reflects Christ's character. And make no mistake about it, you don't produce the fruit. He does. He asks you to simply bear it or to hold it. Notice John chapter 15 for that. A window of understanding. Walking in the Spirit is like allowing the wind to fill the sails of a boat. The wind represents the Spirit, and our sails represent our willingness to be moved by Him. When we lift our sails in surrender, the wind catches them, empowering us to move forward, carried by the Spirit's strength and not our own. This illustrates the grace-faith connection. God's activity, grace, is received through our receptivity of faith. In conclusion, the conflict between flesh and spirit is ongoing in the life of every Christian. But through the power of Christ within us, we can live free from the patterns of the flesh. As we walk by the Spirit, we experience victory, not because we fight the flesh, but because we surrender to the work of Christ in us by faith. In the final video of next week, we'll explore how Satan uses temptation to exploit these flesh patterns and how we can resist his schemes through Christ's victory. Join me for part four as we conclude this series. But until then, let me call you to action once again. Reflect on the areas in your life where the Spirit may be prompting you to walk in a new way. Are you still holding on to old flesh patterns? Or are you willing to surrender those areas to the Spirit's leading? Ask the Lord to show you how to walk in the freedom that His Spirit provides. Let Him fill the sails of your heart so that you can be carried by His strength and not your own. Thanks for so much for tuning in today and watching this broadcast. And if you know somebody that would benefit from it, please share it with them. And thanks for liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Until next time, my prayer for you is that you'll experience life as God intended.